This episode is brought to you by Vital Farms. Isn't it bullshit to have to question where your food comes from? At Vital Farms, you can trace your pasture-raised eggs all the way back to the source, the pasture. On the side of each pasture-raised carton of eggs, you'll find the name of the farm where your eggs were laid. And when you look the farm up on their website, you'll get a peek at all the sunshine, fresh air, and open space the hens enjoy. Learn more and find out where to buy them at vitalfarms.com. Vital Farms, keeping it bullshit free. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Dr. Sharzad Narabi about leading culture change and the toughest part of managing and sustaining a strong organizational culture. Dr. Sharzad Naravi, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you so much, John. Wonderful to be here. It is a pleasure to be with you today. I'm really excited to have a nice conversation around leading culture change within organizations. It's really tough to do. And so leading a new culture change, of course, is challenging, but then maintaining and sustaining that change over time is perhaps even more challenging. So we're going to be unpacking that and having a nice conversation around how we can go about doing that as we move into the future of work. Where are you joining me from today? I'm joining you from San Diego, California. Beautiful. I love San Diego area. My wife is a Southern California girl. Uh, Great to be with you. And thanks for joining me from Southern California. I am south of Salt Lake City in Utah, and we are going to have a great conversation. As we get started, I wanted to share Sharzad's bio with everybody. Dr. Sharzad Naravi is a business psychologist, speaker, author, master coach, and CEO of Strategy Meets Performance. She empowers leaders of fast growth to Fortune 500 companies to strengthen their leadership, culture, and bottom line through executive coaching, facilitation, and skill development. She has been named Citizen of the Year, Trailblazer of the Year, and a voice to listen to for her community work and original research on CEO best practices. Uh, Pleasure to have you. Anything else you would like to share with me or my audience by way of your background, your personal context before we dive on into the conversation? Thank you so much, John. Yes, I will add one thing. The title of my new book is My Philosophy on Culture. So I think that would be important to note. A powerful culture starts with you and I'll have more to say about that as we open the conversation. Okay, wonderful. Well, let's let's get going with that then. Uh, you you've done a lot of speaking, writing. You're you're very active and a thought leader in this space. Why don't you frame up for us a little bit about your approach to leading culture change and why you feel it's important for leaders today to have that that competency and capability to be a successful leader moving into the future of work. Thank you so much. So a couple of things. There are different reasons why it's so important to be paying attention to culture. One is the company's life cycle as it grows and matures from startup to childhood to prime where it starts spinning off new organizations. So managing culture and leadership in that way is really important as there's changes in the industry That's really important to pay attention to how you are doing work, how you're working with your employees, how you are serving your clients. And third, 
look what we just experienced in the last couple of years. Things that we would never expect will happen in society, in our environment, sociopolitically. And how do we prepare and not just survive, but thrive in these difficult times? And this is all about culture. It is, yes. And the last couple of years have just accelerated us into um, the future of work and the pace and rate of change has just dramatically increased. And what people are have been dealing with the last couple of years and continue to deal with has just been challenging to say the least. And so change is the name of the game. Being agile and adaptive and being able to pivot rapidly is is very, very important. All of that, though, requires a culture of change. It requires a mindset towards, you know, growth and abundance and agility and all of those things so that we can be highly adaptive uh, to, to respond to, you know, changing uh, external factors in, in society and the economy, et cetera. Um, so all of this just leads to, you know, why change is so important, why we need to embrace it and learn how to manage it better. Uh, and leading culture change is challenging, as I've mentioned. Um, but but once you roll out a change initiative and you go through the implementation process, uh, it's not enough to just go through that process. Then you have to manage it in an ongoing way and sustain it over time if you want it to really have the kind of impact that you were aiming for all along. And that's a process and a challenge in and of itself, isn't it? Absolutely. And to your point, working on culture is not a one-time thing. You can have an amazing retreat where you talk about the vision, the updated values, how you want everyone to work on these top five areas, and then what happens. And I, I think of culture as a living organism, right? And I use the metaphor of trees because how are we going to be rooted, deep rooted, and still growing? And so much of culture comes down to the mindset of the leaders, of the CEO, of the person running the organization, because change will happen. Change is supposed to happen. We should expect it. And when we make a decision of who we want to be as an organization, how we will behave, it's one thing to come up with it and even get input from everyone, which is great. And it's another thing to communicate it, but then how do we live it? And so I think the two biggest things of managing culture is one, the mindset of the leader. And I have a couple of things to say about that and the openness. And number two, sustaining culture. So when you have a living organism, you need to continue to give it water, to give it nutrients, to ensure its good health. It's culture is not a one-time thing. It's ongoing. And, and it's beautiful. Yes, it's a lot of work at times when people are resisting or not ready or just unhappy about circumstances, but it's that leader being deep rooted and anchored and not just, not only just flowing with resistance, but expecting it and being okay with it and creating a communication, a style where people can express themselves. Um, yeah. So those are the two areas and Very I can expand on that. Or if you have more questions. Yeah. Well, and I think it'll continue to come out as we go throughout the conversation this morning. I know you have a three-step model that you call watch it, drive it and walk it. Maybe you can uh, explain that to us a little bit and share a little bit more about that and break that down for us. Sure. And um, I'd like to share a couple of things as you um, help me share screen. Um, when over the years I've given talks for CEO groups and leaders, one of the things that they would share with me is Dr. Sharzad, I really um, have a sense of what culture is. And I think we all do. We have this intuition about what a cu good culture looks like. People are engaged. They're going above and beyond. Customers are pleased. The company's growing. And the thing they would ask me, John, is, can you break it down for me? Can you tell me what to do? Because 
there's a lot of great information out there on engagement and um, a coaching culture, but you, I really wanted to create something that was in steps and tangible things to do. So I want to give you the background of how I um, created my book. And I want to share a couple of things here. Um, so openness, as I mentioned, is so important to driving a excellent culture. It's openness that maybe there's more that I could learn. Maybe these uh, comments I'm getting from my managers saying, oh, this new generation, and I'm just giving one example, this new generation, they don't want to work hard or it's them. And one of the things that's so important is to be curious about the world outside of our own world and our own thoughts. And um, sometimes we carry a backpack and this is not a, a, a backpack full of great resources and healthy snacks and water and sustenance. This is a backpack of negativity. And it has stuff that we carry in our mind that messages we're telling ourselves and messages we're thinking about others. It's them, it's not me, it's, that gener it's this new generation. It's these people, gosh, they're complainers um, or maybe thinking I'm not good enough or how can I look good? And to come to a place as a leader of openness and curiosity is such a first important step of creating and sustaining an important culture. You're absolutely right. We all have our stuff. We all have our baggage. Uh, so when we talk about change and we talk about resistance to change and, and breaking down resistance and generating buy-in towards the change, we have to recognize that every single member of our team, ourselves included, have our own backpacks full of stuff, right? And we have our reasons why we're resistant. And so part of this conversation has to be, how are we going to help people um, think about their own baggage and and work through that so that they can get to a point where they don't have to be fearful of the change that's happening around them, but they can actually lean into it and embrace it and see it as an opportunity for growth and development. And and being not just being open to resistance, because sometimes we want to create a new program or show up in a new way and people will resist but to expect it and be okay with it and welcome it. That's not, it's a big order, I know. And what it requires is us seeing the world as uh, through a lens of positive intent versus what we often naturally do when we feel like we're under threat. It's in a place of fight or flight. And what you're seeing in this image is a representation of our ego. That's the part of our mind that wants to keep us safe. And on occasions when we are in real danger, it does, but it's unemployed. And so it, it sees a lot of things as danger that's not dangerous. So for example, if someone is resisting um, a new way of doing things or a new way of managing, there is a lens of seeing the world as threatening and dangerous versus seeing, you know what, maybe this is a good thing. Maybe I could take a bigger step back. And so managing, just knowing, and in my book, I talk about what is the ego? Why is it there? How do we appreciate it, but overcome some of the negative messages we're going to tell ourselves? Um, and, and that's part of the openness, right? You may have a situation where employees are resisting to the point that it feels like re rebellion and what do we do in these situations we have to get curious we have to come from a place of what is this about you know what can i do to understand this and get everyone's input because a lot of times people leaders will just say this is what we're doing and when you take the time and it takes time to get input you get everyone on board you create a different environment so um, that's about managing the inner world. So the openness yeah. is tremendous. Go ahead. No, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. And um, and so my three approach model, the first one is before we do anything, let's take a pause and look at your culture from a fresh set of eyes. 
it's the same place you've been going in and out of, whether you are the CEO, whether you have um, employees that you want to seek input from. It's a fresh look and part of it, and I, and I use acronyms in all three because they are memorable and you can go back and look at the steps. And part of examining your culture is asking questions, seeking um, information, being open to when people give you feedback. And this goes back to the ego, to being open and curious, because it's very easy to feel defensive, especially if you've worked really hard on creating a great workplace. And I have some checklists on things to look at. So depending on where your company is in the life cycle and what things you want to accomplish, these different checklists are things that you and a group of people can go through. And it, it's very simple. You know, I have items for each one and it's like a thumbs up, thumbs down comments. And all of these resources I've made available on the book's website, it's a powerfulculture.com. So they're all downloadable and um, physical spaces looking at what does it look like when someone, and now that we are in many ways back in the physical space to some degree, what does it look like when someone walks in? Who's greeting you? What's happening? What's on the walls? Is, do you walk in and the, there's a receptionist who, who's just not really paying attention to you and they're just on the phone or on their headset? Or is it welcoming? And do you feel, because you could feel a culture right from the beginning. Um, what kind of communications are you hearing from your leaders about the vision, the strategy, where we're going? Um, what's the employee experience? And this is really important now um, as we have the hybrid world. You know, over the pandemic, people were hiring people they never saw in person. I mean, it's it's remarkable. And um, what's the employee experience from when they first come in and the onboarding to what type of development there is for them? How do they get promoted? How do employees get held accountable? And then group dynamics is paying attention in a group and seeing who's speaking, who's not speaking, what's the underlying messages? Is it inclusive? Is there diversity of thought? And I talk about in the book that you can through creating the right agenda, through creating guidelines for when you start the meeting, through having people pay attention and making sure everyone's speaking, you really can improve the the diversity and the inclusion in the room. Yeah, I, I think that's also fantastic. I like the way the, the acronym watch it. Um, for those who can't see the the screen, who are just listening to the podcast feed, walk around, ask, seek, explore, take in feedback, clarify and understand, handle your ego. And then the it is inspire a new plan and take charge of growing yourself and your culture. And then you have those four items on your checklist that you just talked about, all of which are super important. I think all of those are super actionable things that we can just start doing right now today to start making a measurable difference. It's just exciting to do this and look at it from a new lens. The second step is how do we create a culture that's open to feedback, that's open to growth? And this is a coaching culture. And I know that the majority of people are not going to take a coaching certification program, which is hundreds of hours of training and practice. However, John, as you know, we all have to coach in our day-to-day -day lives at work, with our clients, at home, with our children, with our spouses. Coaching is an ability to help bring out the best in someone. It's asking questions to help them think through where they may be stuck and what they could do. It's asking versus telling. And I see with so many of my clients who are um, doing great work and very talented, when employees come up to them and ask a question, it is quicker in the moment to give the answer, but to take the time to coach someone and ask questions will now shape new responses in their brain when that situation comes up again. And in the long term, you're teaching someone to fish and be self-sufficient versus giving the fish and giving the answers. And some leaders, the ones who are really honest about it, like the feeling of being able to have the answers. They're, there's an energy they get from it, and I get it. For 
you want people to grow, you have to remind yourself, I don't need that esteem, even though it's fun that I know what I'm doing and I can tell them what to do. I am going to take the time and coach them. And my drive it model, and this could be used for yourself or for coaching others, has questions under each of the steps because I wanted to give a tool that people can immediately start using. And the first one is determine the challenge. Sometimes the challenge is obvious. Sometimes we have something bugging us and we're not sure why, and we're not even sure how to articulate the problem. And so creating a space for someone to determine what that is, to give someone a chance to dream about what if this challenge were resolved. And I wrote, reflect on what making this change would mean to you. And in my coaching, I, I give the space to a client to imagine for a moment, let's say you reached that goal, whether it was a goal for a promotion, a goal for starting a company, a goal for starting a podcast, which I know is no joke and it's a lot of work. I give you props for that, John. Imagine you did it. What would be happening? And I let them imagine what would a day look like? Who are you talking to? What are you wearing? What are you doing? What's going on? And when we could take a time to imagine something amazing that we desire, it's almost like our brain starts believing it and we start attracting those opportunities. And so that's the R. The I is invite a new way of thinking. And I help clients look at what assumptions they've had. We all, when we're stuck in something, we have some assumptions of how things should be. And it's so important to Look at what that is and wonder, might there be another way of looking at this? The V is about courage, valiantly getting out of your comfort zone. Anytime we want to create a new outcome, it takes us thinking and showing up in a new way. And sometimes it is out of our natural comfort zone. So if you are someone who wants to speak more in your organization or speak up, and let's say your natural energy is more of an introverted type where you like to think, process, and speak. Maybe you think everyone talks too much. And here's a chance that if you want to reach a particular goal of sharing your voice is getting out of that comfort zone and knowing that speaking up as much as it may not be the most comfortable thing will make a difference for yourself and others. So there is that um, bit of courage the E is for engaged support. There are people around us who want to support us and that we can support. And oftentimes we shy away from it. And if there is something you're working on, it's so helpful to have people who support you, whether they're checking in with you, whether they're serving as a, a group of advisors to you. And then the next one, initiate the first step. One tiny step is what could bring momentum and get you on that path. So I often ask clients, what's one tiny thing you could do? Whether it's look up an article or talk to one person. And um, the last one, transform your thinking to prepare for challenges. When he, anytime we take on something new and it's out of our comfort zone and we haven't done it before, it will be difficult because it's your first time doing something or thinking a certain way or showing up a certain way. And what if we were to own it that this is going to be hard and be okay with it and uh, not be surprised by it every day, right? I have clients that they, clients in financial services, and this is a tough time to be in that role because the markets are up and down and people get mad. And how do you prepare for that and show up resilient and anchored and really present and and it helps your clients but it also helps yourself and your team and so that's the drive it model and the steps and there's there's questions for each of the steps you've broken it down very well and and articulated uh, many very important aspects to to carefully consider so uh, again i would encourage the audience you know to to really Think about this, self-reflect on it, and think about those different components. Now, how about the walk it piece? So the walk it. One of the biggest things employees at all levels of the organization are looking for is a senior team that's aligned 
that has the same messages, that is walking the talk. It's something we crave. It's something when we see, we feel amazing. We talk about it with people when our company is leading in a way that is aligned with what they're espousing and the values they're talking about. And oftentimes I see senior teams and I work with senior teams and uh, as a group and the leaders one-on-one -on -one, and I see that there is some type of uh, dynamic, which it could be a lot of things are going well, but then some things are difficult. So sometimes, and more often than not, it's about not speaking up where there will be a meeting and um, not enough space is given to discuss things that maybe not everyone's on board with and, and debate it safely and constructively and come to a consensus together and decide Whatever we decide, we are going to be aligned in our messaging. And oftentimes, um, people won't speak up in the meeting, and that's because of the culture that has been formed. And it can be changed. And they, you know, they will go to their teams and say, and the employees will say, "Are we really doing that thing that our CFO wants to do, or our CMO wants to do? That marketing plan sounds weird." And if a leader says, well, you know, I think it's a dumb idea, but, you know, let's just see what happens. That hurts the whole senior team. That hurts the organization. And so walk it is about how do you, as a team, walk the talk, stay aligned, create values you live to, integrate them, track them. And this not only helps the organization when the senior team's aligned, but it, it, it helps guide when there's changes that need to happen. That alignment is so key. And like you said, every no one expects perfection. And when we have aspirational goals, we're going to fall flat sometimes and we're not going to quite get there. You know, you shoot for the stars, you hit the moon kind of a mentality. Nobody uh, expects for you to be able to do everything that you uh, are trying to do. And they know that there are going to be setbacks, but they can also see honest effort and intent and they can see the, the effort towards trying to improve. So when you do fall short that you're uh, learning from it and trying to calibrate and, and iterate and, and put your best foot forward. So walking it is very, very important. This has just been a really fascinating conversation. I note the time. I'm going to have to let you go here in just a minute. But before we wrap things up for today, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, where they can find your book, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Sure. Um, my book's website is the most memorable one to remember, a apowerfulculture.com. And that's where you can download the three the forms actually there's more than three but for each model and my contact information is sharzad s-h-a-h-r-z-a-d at strategy meets performance that is my website strategy meets performance my book is found on amazon in kindle and audibles i actually made the audio for it and again uh the title and it's the philosophy that I have is a powerful culture starts with you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Shahzad. It's been a real pleasure. We just scratched the surface. There's so much more we could dig into. Uh, I'd love to have you back anytime so we could continue the conversation. Um, for today, we'll leave it there. And I encourage my audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Shahzad can do for you. Check out the book. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.